Are you frustrated that men never seem to have the desire to chase or pursue you? Do you wonder what it is you're even doing that is preventing them from chasing you? Here's the secret. It's because you're too nice. But on today's show, we'll discuss exactly why men will never chase if you're too nice and how you can adjust your approach so that the men will chase you like a hungry hyena. The more likable you are, the more boring you are. A guy plans a date with you a week in advance, then the day of, he never messages you, doesn't call you, doesn't even address the fact that he, you guys had a date plan, flops on you, no words, no text, no nothing. And then a couple days after that, he goes right back to texting you like he regularly does. And because... You don't want to confront him. You don't want to cause problems. You want to, you know, be peaceful and not address things. You're just like, okay, I won't say anything. Maybe he just forgot. I know in your mind you're thinking, well, it's, you know, it's just, you know, it's easier simply because you're too afraid to be confrontational that he will no longer see you in the best light. He might not think you're easygoing. He might not think you're peaceful. Even if I hang out with you, even if I do date you, all I think to myself is great. This is someone I can definitely take advantage of. You need to understand you're not going to appeal to every man. That's fine, though. Nobody appeals to everyone. You're only trying to appeal to the people that you appeal to by being more of yourself. And the more you be yourself and the more you uh, hone in on who you are as a person, that confidence that grows inside you begins outwardly projecting. It also tells them you must have confidence because you have value. Validation to value less. You need me to validate you for you to feel like you have value. And if I don't do that as a man, then you don't see your own value. Let's say you're dating a guy and consistently thinking about how you can do more for him. So in, let's say in the process of you dating him, right, you go on one day, two days, three dates, right? Now you really like this guy. You really want this guy to like you. So now you're thinking of what you can, what gifts you can buy him, if you, how you can call him more, how you can be more available. So you're clearing your schedule. Oh, I got work today, but you want to hang out? No, I'll take, I'll take work off. So I make it easy as I possibly can for you, hoping that you'll like me even more because I'm so available and I'm so free every time that you're free. That's not going to help him appreciate you more. That's it's not going to help him pursue you or chase you. It's actually going to make him sit back, relax and chill out. It's a constant cycle of you just sitting there with your mouth open, hoping that I'll spill some validation in your mouth. And the process of that will make you valueless to the men because eventually they say to themselves, if you did have real value, you'd walk around with the confidence oozing out of your pores that you have real value. And if you knew you had real value, you don't gotta convince me to see it. You don't gotta beg me to see it. Peasant energy. This is gonna sound mean. It's supposed to sound mean so that you can actually grow from this. You show him that you will let anything slide just simply because you don't want to confront a situation, ruffle any feathers, or make anything uncomfortable that he might possibly not want you or want to be with you anymore. Let's say when I forgot the date, I forgot to tell you, I forgot to text you that I was busy or doing something. I just didn't even acknowledge the fact that we had planned a date and, you know, it just, I never messaged you or called you on the day of the date. And let's say now, because you don't want to address things. You don't call me out on the fact that I just totally abandoned our date. You don't confront it. You don't want to be mean. You don't want to address it, whatever. And then the next time we plan a date now, you're the one calling and texting me all day and every day leading up to it to remind me, telling me, hey, you said we're going to go out on a date this day. Hey, are you ready? Hey, are you okay? Hey, are you this? Are you that? Are you this? Are you that? Right? And you're chasing after me. When you do that, you let go a lot of peasant energy because a peasant is someone who allows themselves to get stepped on over and over and over again and doesn't say a word because a peasant doesn't even see themselves as valuable enough that they even feel it's necessary or they deserve to speak up for themselves. They believe truly in their mind that they are below, that they are less than, which is why they allow those who they believe are above them to mistreat them to disrespect them, to do whatever it is they want to them. Say, and this is what guys will probably never admit to. What we really say to ourselves a lot of the time is, oh, she needs validation. Oh, 
she has peasant energy. If I get with this girl, or if I get into like a little situation, a little thingy thing with this girl, I can get her to do whatever it is I want her to do. I can take advantage of her. I can literally dangle in front of her the carrot of like a relationship, or I can tell her or convince her of anything. I can sell her a dream, even if it doesn't make sense. She'll believe anything I have to sell. I can actually be with someone or that I don't have to give anything to while receiving everything I possibly can for myself. I'll take that confidence that I received from the peasant woman and I'll go and I'll give that to my dream girl when I chase after her. Painless. I want us to get out of the thinking that the only way to get guys to love you, want you and appreciate you is to make him feel positive emotions. It's actually not that. And actually, if you're only making a guy feel positive emotions, it's going to feel very painless to him. This is where the problem comes in with being too nice. Tell me, the guys you like the most, would you say they gave you the most anxiety or the least anxiety? I want you all to see how the process of you liking and being interested in someone is literally correlated with the men who are giving you the most anxiety or pain. We're only able to elicit strong feelings for someone through not just intense positive emotions, but intense negative emotions as well. Because the process of becoming emotionally invested in someone actually requires pain as well as positive emotions. Talk to you guys about anxiety before and the different ways you can elicit anxiety by staying off the cell phone. Think about the idea of when the guy's, you know, go, going down his flower bloom and he's picking a dandelion and he's saying, she loves me, she loves me not. She loves me, she loves me not. She loves me, she loves... What do you, what, what emotion do you think that actually is? That is pain. I know we think, oh, but you know, that's no, that's love. That's the fact that he wants to be with her. No, that is pain. That is anxiety. Because if I knew that she loved me, I wouldn't be going back and forth. Let's talk about desire. I need you to understand the state of desire can only be present in a place where something is not present. If I tell you, come over to my house, yo, you know, come over, I want you to sleep over at my house, you know, not in no weird way. I'm like, yo, come downstairs, yo, you can have anything you wanna eat in my kitchen, yo. I got the fridge stocked up, I got all the cupboards stocked up, all these amazing uh, snacks, we got fruit gushers, we got fruit roll up, we got apple pie in the fridge. You can have whatever you want in the, in, on the stove, in the cupboards, uh, on the fridge, in the fridge accept this one thing and i look you in your eyes and i tell you you can eat anything in my kitchen but you better not dare touch the chocolate chip cookies on top of the refrigerator if you touch my chocolate chip cookies it's going to be very very bad anyways have a good rest of your day. I'm going to go out to Walmart and do some little errand shopping and then I'll see you later. And I leave you there in my house. While there might be so many different options to choose from, so many things that you could possibly uh, stuff your face with in my kitchen, what is the one thing that your mind is going to be thinking about the moment I step foot outside of that door your mind is going to be thinking about those chocolate chip cookies on top of the refrigerator i wonder why he doesn't want me to have those chocolate chip cookies you're going to start looking at them you're going to start analyzing them you're going to start seeing i wonder if he'll notice if 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 i take one or what kind of strategy could i use to replace one of those cookies with a cookie already in the cupboard so he won't notice that i took one and the reason i give you that example is because you see how desire was only present for the thing that you couldn't have. All the other foods and snacks and refreshments, drinks and everything that was available to you, you didn't even think about those things. The only thing you could even desire was the thing, the chocolate chip cookies that you could not have when you're too nice. When you're trying so hard to be likable, you're going to do things like be always available in the process of being unavailable to him. That is the only time he will be able to desire you. 